Support for this podcast comes from the law firm of Davis Malm. Whether you're a developer, property owner, manager, or commercial tenant, their real estate attorneys know the lay of the land, not just the law. Learn more at davismalm.com. WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. WBUR senior education reporter Carrie Young, welcome back to The Common. Hey, Daryl. I'm really excited to be here. Yes, yes, yes. We're excited to have you. Now, Carrie, you have a story about the popularity of a program called Mass Reconnect which helps residents 25 and older who do not have a college degree go to a community college for free. And we mentioned popularity because all of the state's 15 community colleges saw an increase in enrollment since the fall. Carrie, this seems like a really good sign for the state. And before we get into the reasons why and some of the complexities there, can you tell us more about Mass Reconnect and how it works exactly? Yeah. So just like you said, Daryl, it's available for Massachusetts residents 25 and older who don't already have a degree. And you do, there are a couple of other stipulations, like you do have to take at least six credit hours, but that is that equates to like two classes every semester. So basically, you can either go online to the state website, or all of the community colleges are equipped to help you out with this. The first thing they'll have you do is fill out the federal financial aid form. And so that just helps them see how much money that the federal government will give you in grants and other things that are not loans. And then after that, the whatever community college you decide to go to, they'll look and see if you're eligible for other state scholarships. And then after that, that's where... Uh, Mass Reconnect kicks in, it pays for the dollars left over, which in the industry is known as last dollar. So it's a last dollar program. But essentially, Mm -hmm. as far as the student is concerned and kind of knows, is that they're getting their community college tuition for free. And there's even some money in there for books for you, too. Damn, look at that. That sounds great. If I was a student like that, I would totally take advantage of this. Oh, yeah. And response has been pretty significant. Enrollment in Massachusetts community colleges is up 8% since the fall before. And that's pretty significant, especially when you compare it to the state's four-year colleges. They had more stagnant kind of growth. There might be some other factors at play, but this is definitely playing a role in getting people back to school. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to any students who are taking advantage of the program? I did. Yeah, I talked to a couple. And one of them was a young man named Ryan Soulier. He is 27 years old, so he qualifies as far as the age limit goes. And he is majoring in chemistry at Mount Wachusett Community College. And he had already been going to school. He said his mom told him about Mass Reconnect. And he said so far, it's really been making a pretty big difference in his kind of work-life balance, if you will. Here's how he describes it. It just allowed me to switch to part-time at my job, and uh, that helps me be able to get my homework done more easily and stuff. It's less stressful. So, like I said before, this seems like a really good sign for the state, but I wonder how is it going for the community colleges? How are they dealing with the influx of students? Well, I think the answer here is twofold. On one hand, um, you hear a lot of just excited remarks from school leaders about the the energy on campus. They love having new students and the opportunities that this opens for them. Um, so I talked to quite a few community colleges for this, and I want to just play you a few of those initial responses that I heard from folks. We didn't expect such a response, but we were delighted. The energy is wonderful. It definitely feels busier. There have been tears, people saying how life-changing this money will be for them. So that was David Podell, the president of Mass Bay Community College, Melissa Holster, the financial aid director at Bunker Hill Community College, and Jason Marsala, the enrollment director at North Shore Community College. So, you know, there is definitely like a lot of excitement, like I said, about all of this happening. On the other hand, the extra students on campus, the state average increase was 8%. At Mount Wachusett, Community College, for example, it was higher. It was 12.4% increase. And the staff there is having to deal with, you know, processing more 
financial aid applications without having increased staff. So that's kind of part of the struggle that uh, some of the community colleges are seeing right now. But then on top of that, you know, it's not just like the additional applications. It's at least with financial aid applications, it is complicated. And part of the complicating factor here is in the last few years, the state has introduced a lot of programs that are last dollar, like we talked about already, like they pay for the remaining amount of money that a student would owe after the federal money and other scholarship money kicks in. And so I talked to Heather Rulin, the financial aid director at Mount Wachusett Community College, about how her staff and her peers think about this. And here is what she told me. When the directors got together to talk about Mass Reconnect, the term was coined um, last dollar fight club. Like, really, what's the last dollar, right? The staff is trying to decide where do people fit? And sometimes it's obvious, like, if you are wanting to go into nursing, you go into mass nursing. Other times it's a little more murky and figuring out where students fit is time consuming. They're just really weighed down by, by quite a few challenging factors. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Politics has never been stranger or more online, which is why the politics team at Wired is making a new show, Wired Politics Lab. It's all about how to navigate the endless stream of news and information and what to look out for. Each week on the show, we'll dig into far-right platforms, AI chatbots, influencer campaigns, and so much more. Wired Politics Lab launches Thursday, April 11th. Follow the show wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with more from Carrie. How is the state responding to the concerns community colleges have about the workload that comes with Mass Reconnect? So the state is being pretty responsive, from what I can tell. Heather Rulin, the financial aid uh, director over at Mount Wachusett, she did tell me that she is actively consulting with the state to try to figure out a way to at least simplify the state money system so that it's, you know, it's easier for them to place somebody in a program or, or get those last dollars, at least simplify the paperwork. So that's happening When this all did roll out, the state did give each college about $100,000 in one-time funding anyway to help with administrative burdens and and market the program. But I, you know, I did talk to Noe Ortega for this story. He's the state commissioner of higher education. And he said, you know, he really feels for the staff in the financial aid offices. He actually used to be a financial aid administrator himself. And so he said, you know, we have seen what has happened and we are taking active steps to fix it. And here's how he described it. This is a year of learnings, I would say, right? I do think that what we need to pay close attention to is what kind of capacity are we going to need to build out? Because we want to live in this new reality for some time. I think the state is trying to learn from the popularity of this program, how it's impacting colleges And also, you know, trying to make that something that is sustainable because it is a priority for the state, from what I can tell. There are some questions about the state's financial health right now. Where does the money for Mass Reconnect come from? Yeah, so this program has about $20 million allocated to it this year, and that money comes from the Fair Share Amendment, also known as the Millionaire's Tax. That funding source is earmarked specifically for education and transportation. So it does seem like a pretty reliable source of funding for some years. However, it is not written into state law that it is provided for like a K-12 system is. So anything can happen, I guess. But given its priority among lawmakers, I would say it's probably going to stick around for some time. What are you watching for moving forward, Carrie? The things that I want to talk about next and look for next is... Maybe potential changes to the way that community colleges themselves are funded. They Mm -hmm. don't tend to get as much state money per student as a four-year college does. So there is that. The other thing I'm looking out for on sort of the lawmaker end of this is what is the best way to do free college? Is it Mm -hmm. at the community college level? Is it allowing students to go to the four-year schools for free? Is it 
having support staff. There's a lot of questions and there's actually a lot of debate about this on Beacon Hill right now. So that is something that I'll be following. Understood. Carrie, if there's anyone listening who wants to take advantage of this program or some of the other programs the state may have to offer, where can they learn more? So I would say the easiest thing to do is find the community college that you want to go to and call their financial aid office or call their information office. A lot of them regularly have info sessions to answer all of your questions. You might get a lot more information, a lot more interactive information from the college itself versus just going to a website. But you can also go to the state website and check it out, too. It's called Mass Reconnect, and it is uh, easily findable on the state website. Got it. Carrie, this has been a pleasure, as always. Thank you so much for coming through to The Common. We really, really appreciate it. Always fun to talk to you, Daryl. That's WBUR senior education reporter Carrie Young. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Common. If you want to get in touch with us, please hit us up on Instagram at WBUR The Common or send us an email at the common at WBUR.org. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.